yeah three shows that blew your mind all right okay so first one i thought about trying to make this really cool and it is cool the answer is cool but the show that completely blew my mind forever was bis you know the glaswegian band bis i don't the, i don't know them no tell, tell me um, about them. they got on top of the pops they were a they were a, a, a like a brief indie sort of sensation not brief that's not fair on them they they ended up on Grand Royal, the Beastie Boys label. But they did a tour really early on and it went through all the kind of toilet venues of the UK and it was them mm. and the Super Animals. And this, so this would have been 1996, maybe? I don't know. Might Maybe later than that, I don't know. But I, it's the first gig I ever went to where it was like a proper band. So I didn't know them. They weren't friends of mine. But it was in a venue that wasn't a proper venue. So I remember like my friend Tom and a load of us went over uh, to Cambridge to the boat race, which is like a little pub venue, a bit like the free butt in Brighton or like, you know, like a one room pub, Talbot Hotel in Stoke or whatever else, you know, I'm trying to think of places that are a bit like it, kind of a one roomer with a stage at the end. Right. And I remember okay. giving up to get in and I could see the guy on the door and I could see into the bar. And I remember thinking, well, that's the bar. I wonder where the venue is. And I remember walking in, <laughs> looking to the side and there's all the gear set up and I was like whoa it's like right in front of me yeah yeah and like this at that time were it's just it was uh, two guitars uh keyboard two guys and a girl um drum machine super like high energy almost a devo or something kind of pop music uh but they just like just blew my mind and like afterwards they were selling fanzines you know and they would totally friendly and cool. And I went to see them a load of times. I went to go and see them with, uh, they supported Ash in a big venue in, in Cambridge, Corn Exchange. I remember then they, they said they weren't going to sell any of their merch in the venue because they said that the venue were going to charge commission. So they oh, just wow. sold the van around the corner. And I remember thinking, <laughs> like, these are That's cool great. things to do. And they're like, and I don't know, like, yeah, they were, they, that, bat, that, that gig just blew my mind because I just thought, it's such a small venue and and it made me realize it didn't have to be the size of something didn't have to make it good mm. yeah you, know, you didn't just because twenty thousand people like something doesn't mean that it's good and vice versa and you know conversely just because 20 people like it doesn't mean it's bad and it was a really amazing and it, it led to me going to loads of gigs at that venue the boat race because it's just down the road from where i lived and uh so i saw like gallon drunk there they were incredible a couple of times saw um prolapse there who are still like one of the best live bands i've ever seen and uh Yurisai yatsura and bands like that like from that era of like british indie where those bands would tour a lot you know leading to what you, you know kind of mogwai and things like that you know you know still around now but that was that was the one that and uh, we played the band uh, i was i'm still in gray hairs we played with um uh stephen from bis's band and I try, uh, not that long ago, a couple of years ago, probably more than that, two, three years ago, four, I don't know. But um, I was trying to, I tried to articulate all that last five minutes to him. And I think he thought I was mad. <laughs> I was yeah. like, well, I've changed, changed my life. And he's like, shut up. I, was like, I really yeah. did. And they, they yeah. reformed, they played in Nottingham a couple of years ago and I went to it. It was great. So yeah, that's awesome. the one. That's one, yeah. Two, two, I'm writing it down. I'm looking over here. Uh, in Nottingham, first proper gig I'd sort of been to in Nottingham, maybe, and it was Bob Tilt and, and Unwound. Um, I know Unwound, and, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I knew Unwound, but I knew Bob Tilton as well. They were they were uh, I've talked about it in other places, but they they were they were like a touchstone point, I think, for people who who of my age group who were doing DIY music and in the UK. So. But they were they didn't play very often they were playing in nottingham which is where they were from i wasn't i lived in northampton at the time i was at university in northampton and um so i got the train over to see them and the venue and it was the only venue i knew in nottingham because i played there already with reynolds so i knew how to get there and i went with my girlfriend and we got off the train walked to the venue and the venue was shut it was all boarded up and everything was just like like it was like did i imagine this gig was even happening what Right. So, what happened? so we just walked in uh, the venue were closed that day uh they they'd been it had been like administrators had taken it over 
Oh. So I remember saying, well, we'll just get, we'll just get some food and we'll just have to go home. So we walked into oh. the market square in, in Nottingham and I could hear Bob Tilton sound checking somewhere in the market square, oh. really loud from somewhere. Walked down this little alleyway and all of the guys from Gringo Records who I'd already met were all in this cafe and they were waving. And it was in this bar in the, just off the market square in Nottingham. So it was dead exciting anyway, like just to, ha to have this weird, oh no, I'm not gonna see it. Oh yes, I am kind of thing. And then it's in this tiny little venue um, called Double Bubble. Where lots of bands have played over the years. I think like, you know. Nice name. Yeah, well, I think, I don't think it was always called that, but I know like Scream played there, DC band when Dave Grohl was drumming for them. Scream played there in the eighties. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember them. So yeah. it's, it's kind of a, ben it's a venue, but it was a weird old place. Uh, yeah, but Bob Tilton was just like, it's still the best gig I've ever seen. And, you know, some of those people in that band are my best, I would class as my best friends, you know, now. But, so it's embarrassing to say that your best friends did the best gig you've ever seen, but it was like, it was incredible. And then I kind of remember Unwound afterwards, even though I'm a huge Unwound fan, I kind of remember them playing, but I don't. <laughs> like, <laughs> Tilton were just so good. And again, that's another one where you're like, that sets, the, that sets the sort of standard for me, you know, of a room that holds about 150 people, not much of a PA system, amps quite loud, and you feel the force of the band not as a sort of secondary thing, it's coming right off the stage. And I think mm. that's, kind of, that, that, that's kind of how I imagine all bands to be. It's something that doesn't happen so much anymore. You don't really get that, I don't find. But they were they were on it and then i tried to talk i remember trying to talk to them afterwards i remember trying to be like oh that was amazing and they were just these like super cool aloof guys afterwards as well which made it even better they're not that but i kind of took that away from it yeah, yeah at the time that was definitely like yeah bob tilton at double bubble in nottingham was amazing and then i was trying to think of another one uh and it would probably be uh, the first big tour that Mogwai did. So I'm going back in time here. Not a lot of things have blown my mind since, obviously, but this is all when I'm in my sort of, <laughs> you know, when I'm younger. But uh, the first big tour that Mogwai did was with Ariel M. And Ariel M was Dave Paho from Slim, his band at the time. Okay. And they played, they did like that same toilet circuit that everyone did. They played every venue, seemingly, that you could <laughs> you could get to in the UK. And I saw them... I saw them in Derby and I saw them in Birmingham. Um, both those gigs were life-changing things because A, Mogwai were just so good at that. I mean, they still are, but they were so good at that point in time. So loud and so ridiculous and kind of like, they felt like friends, you know, they felt like people, they, they didn't look particularly different to any of us a lot. And they they were as drunk as we were, you know, and, and, as, and as daft as we were. So you had them, then you had Ariel M, and that is like a that was a guitar lesson, you know, like an hour long guitar lesson, two nights. So it's just like that's the best like, changed my way of playing completely from watching him. Mm, yeah. And then and and Tim Furnish as well as the other guitarist on that tour. I'm a geek for these things. And then um, uh, on the Birmingham gig, US Maple opened. Do you know US Maple? I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah. That's a weird bill. That's a very weird bill. So like US Maple kind of completely blew everyone's minds for better or for worse. I just remember thinking, what the hell, like what, what the hell was that? I like, got really genuinely scared of them. Like genuinely like, oh, these horrible people. What kind of music, <laughs> what kind of music did they, did they, did they play? It's hard to explain. There is, I would say it was like deconst deconstructed rock. If you take rock music and you get rid of it's a bit like Captain B. It's a bit like Trout Mouse Replica Captain B. I, I was B. just about to say, <laughs> it sounds but, like Beef Art. <laughs> but it's, it's, I don't think Beef Art was ever really into, into like the being a bit kind of perverse and a bit creepy. Like the guy, I remember the guy, the singer Al, would, he had this leather cap on and then a Adidas tracksuit. So he looked like a scary guy anyway. Right. And he just took his cap off spitting into the air and catching it back on his tongue and pulling it back. <laughs> so yeah it's horrible wonderful <laughs> yeah so they're my three they're my three but i was going to say as well um well oh, you've gone really fast all of a sudden your your thing you're right i'm good now and, yeah. and then right before lockdown i saw a bank called 75 dollar bill in london 
and that genuinely is one of the best gigs I've ever seen and really really cool that that was the last thing I saw before lockdown <laughs> yeah, bonus, that was mind blowing bonus one there for, uh, for the free shows yeah, yeah thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this short video you can catch the full episode linked in the bottom left hand corner at the end of this video or you can find the link in the description below I need your support I'm a very new podcast I only have around 100 subs or so so if you could please like this video and if you haven't already subscribe to my channel that will help push my videos up in the algorithm and expand the reach of my videos so yeah thanks for that and uh, see you next time mm -hmm.